Guys, welcome back to Southern Extreme TV. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I've got an awesome, awesome video that you guys have been asking for for a very long time. Today, we are finally going to be doing the 100% complete review um, and follow-up video on my Savage Model 110 High Country in a 308. You guys seen the preliminary video, and I'm excited to bring this one to you. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me today on my channel. If you're new to Southern Extreme TV, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to grow this channel to 100,000 subscribers. That's my ultimate goal. Uh, for those of you that's been with the channel for a long time, you know I like to take the month of June and July off, uh, hang out with the family, do a lot of fishing, and a lot of beach trips, if at all possible. But I want to kind of jump back into the swing of things. We got deer season right around the corner. Um, and I wanted to talk about a gun that I did a um, initial product review on just kind of like a, a first thought and I know you guys have been asking for the full product review of this gun and I have actually been using this gun now for I believe the last four three to four years so this is still my go-to gun um, here in North Carolina whenever rifle season comes in um, and I want to talk to you guys about some of the reasons why I like it um, and why it's my go-to gun even after a lot of the new toys that I've put in the gun safe uh, you guys have not seen over the last couple years. Um, so with that being said, let's dive straight into this. Um, before we get too in-depth, talk about this scope that I have paired with this gun with. It is a scope by a company called Tract. Tract Optics. This is their Toric Ultra HD scope. One thing that um, I want to point out on this scope is it does not have the exposed turrets, which is something that I really like um, for this scope, but it also has the parallax adjustment out here on the side that's easy to adjust. That's one thing that I really um, liked about the scope and pairing it with this gun is because this gun's not a gun that I'm taking out west or I need to make really quick adjustments. This gun is zeroed in at 100 yards. Very rarely am I gonna take a shot past two, 250 yards here on some of the properties that I'm hunting in North Carolina. Um, and it draws in a lot of light. It's very easy to use and it's just paired really, really well this rifle. So now that we got the scope and the format out of the way, let's talk about the performance of this gun and if I've had absolutely any issues over the last four years, toting it in and out of the woods um, and hunting with it in tree stands, climbing stands, box stands, ground blinds, you name it. I've pretty much done anything you can other than travel out west with this gun. Um, so let's start first and foremost with the accuracy of this firearm. We are going to shoot this gun here towards the end of the video and show you guys some of the accuracy on it. Um, this gun right here is absolutely one of my best shooting rifles that I own. And one thing that I really, really love about it is it shoots factory ammunition very, very well. And particularly, it shoots Remington Corlock 150 grain bullets like a dream, which that's one of my favorite bullets that's out there on the market that you can buy. Um, they're starting to be available in stores now. I know they went through a lull there where it's very hard to find the Remington Corlocks, but you can actually find that ammunition now. Um, so this gun shoots that 150 uh, grain Corlock bullet like an absolute dream. Definitely getting sub MOA at 100 yards, which hopefully um, if I shoot good enough, you guys will be able to see that in today's video. Um, one downside to the gun that I, I will touch on, um, we'll kind of we'll start with the positive, the accuracy is, is, is phenomenal. The only negative I don't like about it is it is a threaded barrel and I did try shooting this gun with a suppressor and it did not like a suppressor on the end of this gun for whatever reason. So with the muzzle brake on it or with just the typical thread protector, I'm getting sub MOA out of this gun with um, factory ammunition Remington core lock. But when I put the uh, suppressor on this gun and start shooting it, it actually jacks that MOA up to, or the, the groupings up to like a 1.25. So I'm actually getting a little bit bigger than um, a one inch group at 100 yards, which is still not a bad group um, for a, a, a high end or a mass produced gun with, with factory ammunition. But the problem is without the suppressor, I'm getting sub MOA. So for me, toting the suppressor through the woods um, for the little bit of extra, you know, quietness that you get from shooting a white-tailed deer just wasn't worth it to me. 
um, to sacrifice on that accuracy. So that's one negative that I found about it um, during the course of the four years that I've been shooting this thing. But everything else as far as the gun, the carry, um, the comfort of it has been second to none. And like I said, guys, this is still my number one go-to deer rifle during deer season. Um, it, it is a kind of on the, I'm not going to say it's on the heavy side because I've got a Bergara and a 308 that feels like a ton of bricks compared to this gun here. So this gun, it's not light. It's not going to feel like your old school Ruger M77 with a skeleton stock that's, you know, five and a half pounds that's not what this gun is but all packed out with a scope and everything um, with ammunition and everything in it this gun is is eight to nine pounds so with it having a spiral fluted barrel um, that's a very good compact lightweight gun to take in and out of the woods and it's got a little bulk to it so that way you can get a really good follow-up shot and it doesn't kick you that bad either so one really thing that's one of the really good things that i like about the gun um, one thing that i was a little nervous about when i first purchased this gun was the pvd or pv i think it's the pvd coated you have to correct me on that but it's the it, i call it, it's basically a cerakote um, barrel um, but it's the it's the type of coating that they put on this barrel I was a little nervous about because I thought after I would drag it through the woods scraping it on barbed wire and everything else that eventually I would get a bunch of scratches showing up the only place where I've got any wear and tear hopefully you guys can see is right here next to my serial number and what that is from guys when I wear my safety harness my buckle that I clipped in my tree I, I hook it onto my lineman uh, belt loop and it hangs on this right hand side well when I carry my gun and it hangs right here it scrubs it and in four years of carrying it through the woods that is all that I've managed to put on there as far as dings and scratches or anything else goes so for <laughs> that finish to hold up over that amount of time and if you guys have been watching my stuff you guys know i'm not easy on my equipment i'm in and out of trucks up and down hills in and out of stands um a bunch i mean that's my life when deer season comes in and this gun is actually held up to held up to the elements really really nice um the other thing that's really cool about this gun that i thought was a little cheesy when i first bought it was the accu stock and for those of you that don't know what that means, this stock from Savage actually comes with adjustable comb heights. So depending on what size scope or how high your scope mounts are, um, you can adjust this comb to be lower or even higher depending on what suits your comfort level. Level. And when I first bought the gun, I thought it was a little, I guess, cheesy. It seemed like a, just a, a really cheap selling point for a mark for a marketing director to try to push their line a little bit better. Uh, but actually, once I got the gun out and started sighting it in, I realized that the comb that came with the gun was too low. So I actually had to utilize this AccuStock system and put the neck size up on this comb and it fits me absolutely perfect. And what you get out of that is you get a rifle that feels like a custom fitted rifle without having to pay a custom fitted rifle price point. Again, remember, you can still find these guns all day, every day for around that thousand dollar price tag. Um, the one good thing about the Magnum versions of this gun is it comes with the muzzle brake directly from Savage. Now you can see here that I've got an aftermarket muzzle brake on this one. Your lower calibers like your 308s, 243s, um, 30 out sixes, they just come with a threaded barrel and a, and a, uh, a thread protector. It does not come with the actual muzzle brake system itself which I guess is somewhat of a negative um, I wasn't really a fan of that if you buy your 300 wind mags your uh, 338 Lapua's it's gonna come with that muzzle brake directly from Savage and it's gonna match the barrel as well which is really really nice um, another thing I want to point out on this gun if you guys are new to the Savage is their two-way safety hopefully you guys can see it right here so essentially I have if you pull it all the way back the bolt will not move it's locked if you go one position up, the gun is still on safe, but it allows you to operate 
the bolt itself and then if you go one more click forward that is what takes the gun out of safe and into the firing position so um, that is something that I really like I really like a gun that feels safe um, and to be honest with you, you guys are probably gonna uh, hate me a little bit for this but I'm not a fan of the Remington model 700 safeties which is what every custom rifle manufacturer your Christensen arms your Begaras your Remington's your borings all those custom big guys are modeling their safety features off of that model 700 which is super simple super easy but if you're carrying it in and out of the field in and out of the trucks maybe with family members sometimes it gets a little too easy to get taken off from safety to fire um, and with this being a little sleeker a little more low profile you can see how it kind of lays down flat and you've got that two-stage safety that's something that's really really important to me and I think it, it adds a lot of value to this gun um, going back to some of the custom customizable features on this gun we talked about the adjustable comb height but you've also got the accu trigger which is pretty much I, I'm pretty much a standard on all savage firearms now which is super nice it works like a two-stage trigger um, and since I've started us using the two-stage trigger in this gun I've actually found that I really like that two-stage system and I actually shoot that two-stage trigger better than I shoot a lot of my single stage triggers that I own um, the single stage triggers are really really nice but I've actually because I like this gun and I like that um, accu trigger so much I actually wound up putting a two stage trigger into my coyote hunting setup as well from Rock River Arms which was fantastic my groups dropped um, I was able to get really really good groups and my accuracy went up when I'm actually shooting at a live coyote so that's something that I really really do like um, again the box magazine not again but the box magazine on this is uh, removable and the good thing is the bottom finish of it matches the coating that's on all of the metal parts on the firearm itself so super nice super sleek um, I, I have no real bad things to say about it um, the only negative I got is that it, it's not that much accurate with a suppressor which is in my opinion i wish it was accurate with the suppressor just that way if i come out here in the yard if i was doing this video i wouldn't have to have this hearing protection on that would be super nice to be able to do that but i'm not just going to sacrifice um, 0.5 moa just to reduce a, a gunshot when i'm in the woods actually in a hunting situation so with that being said guys let's shoot this bad boy and let's take a look at some of the groups and uh, show you guys exactly why I absolutely love carrying this Savage once in high country in the woods during my deer season. Alrighty guys, we have got the magazine loaded up. We got the bolt back. We're getting ready to put a round in this gun and we are going to go hot and send some rounds downrange. I got two targets set up. I'm actually going to be sighting in a new gun that I've got that hopefully I'll be showing you guys a video on in the near future. Um, so I'm planning on sighting it in today. But we're gonna take a couple couple groups right here and see just how tight of a group we can get. Again, we're shooting off the bog tripod death grip. So we're not shooting off a bench. So obviously you can, you can gauge uh, what the steadiness level is on this. We're not shooting off sandbags. We're not shooting anything like that. So hopefully this will be a good testament as to what type of groups you can get out of this gun in a true hunting situation um, this is a great example of what it would be like hunting out of a ground blind um, or out of a box stand so with that being said i'm gonna shut up talking let's shoot a couple rounds down range and see what this thing will do <clears throat> shot number one Shot number two. Shot number three. I think we've got four in here. I pulled that one. I felt myself. I'll throw another, another one in there if I can keep from dropping bullets. I pulled that when I felt myself. 
got in a rush. Let's shoot one more right here. <laughs> All righty, guys. Let's go take a look. Chamber is clear. Put this on safety. Take this bolt all the way back. I'm gonna lock this thing down. Point our gun down. Let's go take a look at these groups, guys. Guys, I'm glad y'all are hanging out with me today. If there's any type of video or video series that you guys would like me to cover, uh, whether it be how-to videos, tip videos, shooting videos, whatever it is, drop a comment down below and let me know. Um, I'm always looking for new ways and, and new content to produce for you guys other than just the typical, you know, hunting, fishing, outdoor type thing. Um, and sometimes getting some feedback from you guys is always better. So anything you want to see, drop a comment down below. But right here is the group we just shot. So let me walk y'all through. This is my first shot, second shot, third shot. I pulled this one don't know what happened there so my guess is those last two four and five uh, i know for a fact i pulled that one don't really know what happened there barrel could have got a little little warm because we repped out them five pretty quick but those first three right there man that was a cold bore shot second shot and third shot and you guys can definitely tell that that is uh that is sub moa all day guys you gotta love that from a savage model 110 high country with factory remington core lock ammo and i'll show you guys right here what that bullet looks like if you guys can see if i can get this thing to focus focus there you go wow oh, god you gotta love a core lock man i've killed so many good deer numbers of deer it is just absolutely my favorite hunting round that is on the market it's cheap you can find it it's fun to shoot gotta love it Man, you gotta love a sweet shooting 308. My absolute favorite round in the entire world to shoot, guys. It's cheap, doesn't kick bad, it has great ballistics at long range, um, and you can absolutely get some fantastic, fantastic groups with a 308, and specifically this Model 110 High Country. Guys, I've been using this gun, like I said, for the last three to four years. I absolutely have, I can't say enough good things about it. It's one of the best firearms that I own, and it is hands down my favorite deer rifle to carry into the woods. For a rifle that is around that $1,000 price, uh, price mark, you're not going to get anything better. You're not going to get all of the features that the 110 high country offers in a firearm without spending over well over a thousand dollars you're not going to get the spiral fluted barrel you're not going to get the pvd coated uh, uh, finish you're not going to get the spiral fluted bolt you're not going to get that adjustable accu trigger you're not going to get the adjustable stock all of those things come with the Savage 110 High Country. It's all features that you find on a top tiered custom fitted rifle. Um, and I can't say enough good things about it. So hopefully this video is a good enough review for those of you that's been tracking um, the first initial video that I did on this thing of the, of the unboxing and first thoughts. Um, I didn't want to jump straight into a full blown review too long after that because I really wanted to take this firearm out into the woods, truly try it out, truly put it to the test and actually hunt deer and harvest animals using this gun in real world environments and then come back to you guys and tell you the pros and the cons of uh of what i think this gun is about so guys if you're on the if you're in the market and you're looking for it and you're on that fence line between pulling the trigger on the savage 110 high country 10 out of 10 i highly recommend you're not going to be disappointed for the money it's one of the best bangs for your buck you can get so guys with that being said thank you so much for hanging out with me on my channel 
Honestly, it means the absolute world to me that you're taking the time out of your busy day to watch what I got going on here at my channel. Please take the time to go ahead and subscribe. I'm trying to grow this channel to 100,000 subscribers. This is gonna be uh, one of the first videos coming back into the videoing season for me. Um, if there's anything that you guys wanna see, drop a comment down below. If there's any questions that you guys have on this specific firearm, drop a comment down below or shoot me an email. You can also follow me on social media. I've got an Instagram page and a Facebook page. Um, if you got any questions, and it doesn't have to be about this gun, any questions whatsoever, it's about hunting, um, anything I can help you with, send me a message. I try to reply to everybody if I can. Um, be more than happy to hear from you guys. Thanks so much. I'll see y'all next time.